Okay, let's start what we have left last time. We are looking for amplifiers, and as I said, this course for the first time, maybe I don't know. Uh, we'll concentrate more on MOS uh, technology, MOS device-based amplifiers, oscillators, op amps. Though, as then when I need, and as then when I feed, I will give you something equivalent of bipolar as well. Okay, so not that bipolar is out. I keep saying every time. So today we shall look into uh, typically MOS amplifiers. Uh, we have already solved one problem for MOS, but just to give you more details, uh, there can be three possibilities of an amplifier made in MOS with MOS devices. One is uh, N MOS amplifier. So the word here is uh, the transistor which gives you a GM. Transistor which gives you a GM is called the driver is that word correct the driver transistor is the one where input is received and which gives you gm times something at the output so for example take the first figure this transistor is called driver transistor so if it is n channel kind it's called n mos amplifier if it is a second quad like it's a p channel device then it's called p mos amplifier if there are both p channel n channel gates are connected this will be called CMOS. We already done CMOS, or I don't know whether you may be doing now in your digital course. So this is called CMOS amplifiers, and then uh, the first part, of course, is the driver. What kind of driver you have decides the name: NMOS, PMOS, or CMOS. Then there are other names also we give. One is called based on loads. So you have an NMOS amplifier with first one is resistive load you can see resistance is the load resistance in the case of fourth the resistance is replaced by a transistor okay uh, that is equivalent of that and this transistor acts like a resistor okay so it's called and this transistor we shall see a little later this is device is always in saturation and a saturation transistor resistance we know why it is higher in saturation because the characteristics are very flat R0 is roughly its resistance. So typically by changing the size of the this transistor I can change the W by L of this transistor and hence the resistance. So the resistance of the load is varied by changing the size of the load transistors okay. Uh, if instead of n channel device as a load I can also have a p channel this circle stand for sorry I should have made this is way I differentiate between n channel and p channel a circle at the gate is a p channel device no circle at the gate is an n channel device. So if you have a p channel device and to make n channel device this was my gate this was my drain this was my source can you tell me since MOS transistors are identical from source to drain most cases there will be asymmetric in some case but otherwise source drain can be interchanged. So why did I call this as drain and not as source? Why this upper lead here was not called source because they are identical. I can call this drain and this source but I did not. In n channel device which carriers make transport? electrons is that correct since electrons come from source to drain the actual current will flow from where positive terminal to negative since the actual current is going down the electron current is going up that means source should be lower than the upper side because otherwise electrons cannot move up is that clear that is why they were given such names. So in same logic can you think what I did here which will be source here? upper one because now holes also travel in the same directions as the normal current positive polarity down. So this is source this is drain and again gate is connected to drain. So whenever gate is connected to drain whether in n channel or p channel transistor will enter saturation and its equivalent resistance can be evaluated by finding the W by L. write the equation we will do that and we know what is the resistance we are offering. So what exactly we did we replaced this so called RD by equivalent resistance what is the advantage we get 
you have not done any technology you are not aware but just for the heck of it any any idea why why I am trying to replace resistances by transistors less area typical values of this resistance will be 40 k okay 20 to 40 k. Now if I substitute uh, if I put an actual silicon it will take more than 20 transistor area for one resistor okay. So to an integral circuit what is our importance as many transistors I can pack per unit area that is the density of the transistor and that is what I am increasing every year okay that is what Moore's law said pack pack. So if I put resistor all that advantage I will lose so I am trying particularly integrate circuits we will normally never use RD but for our circuit cores as much if I put RD it does not really matter because it is external I can go to the breadboard and buy uh, take some 40 k resistors from the rack and put there okay we can test it. But in real life when it goes to chip we never put any resistances on chip any day unless it is necessary in case of RF circuits okay. So is that correct there are two kinds of loads N channel saturation P channel there is third one which I forgot maybe I can show you here. which is this load transistor is there is a line shown here means already transistor is on without VGS applied and it enhances as VGS increases where does it shut off at minus VT okay at minus VT. So this is called depletion loads so there are three possibilities of course you can always say another one which is maybe more generic let us say only N channel loads. And this I call VGG. If VGG is equal to VDD, then what is the status of this transistor? VGG is equal to VDD, that means I am connecting to power supply, it is a saturation, that is what we did. If VGG is greater than VDD by 1 VT, more than a VT, then what will be status of this? It is in linear mode, it is in linear mode. So, what is the resistance in linear mode? extremely low it is a linear and R is very low. So in some requirement if you want lower resistance what do we do? We do not put it to VDD but put it to higher voltage and actually use linear circuit, linear device there is that correct? So that R can be further reduced in case as I say I am not saying where do you think R smaller will be required? What R smaller means does current increase or decrease? Increase. So if you have this is what digital people do if you have a capacitive load here and this is to charge this what will be if R is larger what is the time constant larger so switching frequency will be lower. So if R is lower switching frequencies are higher so is the bandwidth connected to it is that correct so somewhere power and frequency are getting related do you get the point larger the current higher is the switch okay lower the currents that is low power lower speeds coming up is that correct. So this is somewhere connected to us so our choice is not in our normal circuit we hardly care of power because we say breadboard pankha laga denge chai to coolant dal denge nothing can be done inside a chip like this. So we have to be extremely worried about what power we actually dissipate per unit area on silicon chip and if you have seen my some graph. Uh, microprocessor these days are consuming so huge a power it is like a rocket nozzle of a uh, huge launcher rocket launchers it's a, so many thousand degrees of centigrade there. So one has to understand that why we are worried in power specifically on a chip is that clear but not in so much in like if you have seen a desktop computers you see it is a big box a huge fan is sitting backside cooling it all PCBs are cooled by huge fans there is running at very high speed around 600 rpms. So what is the advantage there you have a space and you have a fan you have a power supply 220 volt no problems on a chip 1.2 volt supply or 2 volt 1.5 volt supply of which battery is inside and that is that. So you have no way to run a fan there is that clear and therefore on the this fact has to be understood because when you go ahead you should realize why sometimes we, we are so catchy about power, power, power because there on that chip we are only worried about power as of now. 
in our course I may not say so much but just to make you point why all these differences were shown because these are the kinds of amplifiers we may use in chip as well as on the breadboard that is called discrete and integrated circuits. Discrete we may never use this kind why, why do I use this I have a good resistor so this has to be understood that why I am showing you both all the time because in future you will be hardly working on a breadboard you will actually work on chips is that correct. So you must know what is the difference and I go on chip designs or chip circuits. There is a just now I said different kinds of loads some of them I showed some others are also can be shown here this RD can be replaced by a current source. Since you say RD is higher, a current source the output resistance is higher or lower? Higher. If it is a current source, the output resistance is very high. So I say if I put a current source here, fixed current source, which I can create from where? A mirror. You can see if I push a current here, reference current, this current I can adjust to any value. Is that clear? This I can I will show you in a defam how do I actually bias but just take it equivalent current source can be transferred to an amplifier as a load by a simple current mirrors okay simple current mirrors. And another thing which I just now said about the saturated loads how do I calculate resistance I connect gate and drain to VDT write the equation device if it is in saturation uh, first assume in saturation let us say it is because VGS minus VT is less than VDS VGS equal to VDD means VGS minus VT is always less than VDD. If I use this delta IDS by delta VDS is essentially the 1 upon R of this this which is if I differentiate this so R is beta lambda VDD minus VT is that clear. So by what is beta contains beta dash into W by L so changing the size I can change the resistance lambda is a technology parameter beta dash mu C ox is a technology parameter VT is a device parameter technology parameter so all that you can do is change W by L so different sizes of transistors will give different resistances is that okay is that okay. So this is how the loads are created in MOS amplifiers. Last people is it clear loads can be created out of transistors themselves okay and what is the advantage I say the area of this will be 1 hundredth of the area of the same for equivalent value of resistances okay and that is what we are really looking for. How to calculate resistance just delta I by delta V and inverse of that is your R. So nothing great happens just write equations differentiate and get your resistance is that okay. Of course this equation which I write you need not write just want to show you that what is it you just I mean I just I need not have written all that I would have directly written here but I thought you should know why how do I calculate okay. This is only to show you methods this formula is not relevant. This is the method which I am showing how to evaluate R's in a transistors. Okay. Okay. Uh, something you can see. Uh, okay. I thanks for suggesting. If you leave lambda per se, lambda is zero. For example, this equation is quadrat. I mean, it's a parabolic equation. Okay. Now, if you see a IV characteristics of a diode. How does it look? It is something like this. And if I put a parabolic equation, it is something like this. So it closely replicates the diode characteristics. It is actually opposite, depends on the parabolicity. It may be much higher or much lower than that. But it, in normal cases, it would be almost as if following diode equivalent sum. That is why it was called diode connected. Is that clear? Please remember this this is only valid when VGS minus VT is small enough. Okay, if it is too high, then it will go like this, then it may not actually look like diode characteristics. Is that okay? Why diode connected? Okay. Okay. 
there are another ways of uh, uh, defining the amplifiers which is basically circuit based and uh, these are an amplifier can be have a common source terminal what do you mean by common between input and out output whichever terminal is common we say it is a common that so if source is common between input side and a drain side output side then we say common source the other possibility it may be a common gate okay common gate is essentially what means the gate is common between input and output so where will be input at the source side and where will be your output at the drain side gate is common between input and output and the last is common drain okay. Now this common drain is very important circuit for every one of us okay and it is also called source follower in BJT what it will be called equivalently source in BJT is what emitter. So, it is called emitter follower, emitter follower is identical at least in nature as common source amplifier or common drain amplifier which is called source follower. We will do some analysis for common source, please read the Milma uh, this our Seda Smith book for bipolar circuits equivalently okay. Okay, so here is a first amplifier which we did partly last time but repeat again. Uh, you have a common source please remember now here is gate here is drain and here is a source okay. Now you have a source which is common to input and common to output therefore it is given a name common source amplifier. Now the only difference between this and the other one is this source has a source resistance RS, source has a source resistance RS which is shunted by a source capacitance CS, is that okay? So at DC what will happen to this CC, CS, at DC means frequency 0, uh, is the impedance lower or higher, higher open circuit. So for a DC as if capacitance does not exist, CS does not exist, is that okay? 1 upon omega C, if omega is 0, the impedance offered is infinite. This CS will offer infinite impedance against R, RS means open circuit to RS. So RS is the only resistance. So we say a DC capacitance is, uh, this capacitance is open circuit. But there are two more capacitances I have put here. Their values also should be such that at DC values they should act like an open circuit. What does that mean? That the DC voltages here which I am going to apply should not get connected to power supply. They should be blocked to power supply. They may modulate other side then. Is that correct? This DC value here should not get directly connected to input source. So what should we do there put a capacitance which is called series capacitance called coupling capacitance what does it decouple in fact it should be called actually decoupling capacitance what it decouples the AC source from a DC source is that clear AC source from DC source. Similarly from the output this is VCC VDD I want to remove this I do not want to couple this VDD which is the power supply DC power supply to the AC output which is V0 okay. So is that point clear to you at this point what will be the signal DC plus AC and I do not want DC to be output I want to only see AC amplifiers okay. So what should I do I should block DC this CC2 is again the same blocking capacitor or a decoupling capacitor between power supply and the AC signal AC outputs. So what should be their value should be 1 upon omega C I want to be very very high oh, sorry uh, 1 upon omega C for DC it has to be it will always be open circuit but for a lower frequencies or a moderate frequencies what should you act? Whenever for AC signal it should get in, 
So, what should be the impedance offered by these? Practically 0, practically 0. So, what should be the values of them? Because omega are not going to be very high, we are you going to use smaller frequencies as of now. So, C should be very high. So, typically some microfarad 0.47 microfarads or a microfarads could be the decoupling capacitors or this is that some experiment you may be doing you can think why we are putting a larger value of C in the series connections. Same way for this at all the AC frequencies it should it should not it should act as open circuit. So, what should be the value here? Please remember I repeat for DC it should be open but for AC it should actually be a like a short circuit to RS I do not want RS to be part of my AC circuit. So, what should be the value of CS? Please think of it 1 upon omega C ok. I want at a given frequency of operation this should act like a short circuit. C should be again high enough because then only it will act like a and which capacitors normally you put there have you seen there say electrolyte large value capacitors which we put across this device is that clear. So, this C's purpose is at AC frequencies it will short what RS, but for DC frequencies it itself will open up and only RS will appear in the DC network is that correct. This is how a amplifier biasing will be done. Now, bias is done as usual like a fixed bias as shown here RG1, RG2 to VDD and to the gate and equivalent resistance is how much for from thevenins. Please remember here it is very easy no gate current divider is RG2 upon RG1 plus RG2 times VGD that is your thevenins bias what you are want VGS and how much is resistance will offer the parallel combination and that value I have kept here as RG is that correct. RG is nothing but RG1 parallel RG2 is that correct. So, that is that resistance is not shorted or opened by capacity so it is bias it must sit here if it if if RG does not exist what will not exist the DC bias for this will not exist is that correct DC bias will not exist this is the most important part in the actual circuit when I draw. So, having shown you a common source amplifier what do I what is the my ultimate aim I must like I will like to find V0 divided by ok. I think I we are making mistakes. So, we call it RS dash here because you know this RS is a source resistance. So, we start calling I R series or R source or because R source is sitting here. So, that name is should not get confused ok is that ok. Maybe they call it uh, in the book I think if I am not wrong they are calling R signal ok R signal generator. R sig is what they are talking about ok fine. If I have this circuit then I can draw equivalent of that. At the input side you have a input source V in, you have a series resistance of the signal source R s dash, you have the R g larger resistance of bias network R g and they have a gate here. Is that ok? This is if you have just seen the circuit you can see this is the input side ok. From gate ok this is my source from gate to source there is no connection as far as AC is concerned there is no connection between gate to source. Please look at this circuit again if you just a minute between gate to source there is an insulator. So, there is no connection between which is in contrast to what bipolar if this was your base current how much current would have been flowing here beta plus 1 IB. So, there is a much easier case in the MOS because there is nothing actually comes out from the other side ok. So, ideal device in some sense. Now, for this other side at the output equivalent of that side you can see what is the output model we have said whatever is the VGS signal appearing here at the gate with reference to source which is grounded gm times vgs is the current source gm times vgs is the current source shunted by what r0 which is the output resistance of the transistor ok output resistance of the transistor 
So, this is actually equivalent transistor source GM VGS parallel R0. What is this RD? RD is the drain resistance which we have put there. And what is this additional RL I am showing you here? This is external load which I do not know, this may be coming from external side. So, that is my actual load which may be RL, okay. So, if I show, show you now, it is R0 parallel RD parallel RL. Now, we also need to find apart from gains two more parameters. What is the problem I said in connecting the two circuits in bipolar? The output impedance and the input impedance are sometimes equal or bad, okay. One is much lower than the other. So, it is called loading effect. Now, I want to see how much is the R in and how much is the R out of my circuit. So, that can I cascade? What do you mean by cascade? The output of the first stage is given to the input of the next stage. Is that correct? This is called cascade. So, can I cascade? Another word uh, which I am going to do after this is cascode. What could it be different from? What is the word I used earlier also I once said? Cast code amplifiers have one advantage. What does what is the disadvantage it gives over the normal amplifiers? I said you something. Norm, we have not talked bandwidth, so you are we will not remember it immediately. We said gain bandwidth product of an amplifier is constant. Okay. This is called figure of merit. If you increase gain, bandwidth goes or we will see the expression later. Cast code, what it does? It breaks this this limit. That is exactly is what is it doing. The gain can be enhanced without losing bandwidth and that is exactly what all these years we were looking for. Okay, oh, I do not want to lose my gain at the cost of increasing the bandwidth or retaining bandwidth at higher gains. Okay. This is exactly what cascode does. Okay. So, we will go to cascode amplifier later, but let us right now think that this word should not be confused any day. Okay. So, what is VGS value? If you look at this is a, I hope that you have done uh, basic circuit course reasonably good. This is simple mesh equation. This voltage equal to this plus this into Vn. It is a potential divider. So, it is Rg upon Rg plus Rs dash time Vn is your VGS and which is the case when it is equal to Vn? When Rg is much larger than Rs dash. You can say okay, all that input signal is at the available at the as VGS, but this condition must be met. Is that correct? This condition must be met. If not, you should use whatever value RG RS dash has you use there. It is something like saying since there will be something in denominator larger than numerator, it will be less than VGS will be less than VN, but it may be 0 0.9999 VN. So, why should I worry about 0 0.59? I say VN. So, the idea is to know where to when use these are all things which I am trying to show you in real circuits what do I assume. In this course since you are doing analysis please write everything okay. I am not giving you values. So, in analysis you should show what it is, but in real life I do not use that I say okay this is past okay. This has to be understood why we quickly do things many much earlier than others not because we cannot solve this we just know how anyway that is same. Okay. At the output side, what is the current? Only current source is GM VGS, but the direction of current is what? From drain towards source, is that correct? GM VGS, but the output is always shown as plus minus. So, what should be the sign should be given? Opposite because GM VGS will actually go from like this, but voltages are measured like this. So, we say V0 is minus, this minus is very important. What does it mean in uh, circuits? Minus means invert or a phase of 180 degree, phase of 180 degree. So, if your input signal is in one phase, the output is always 180 degree out of phase from the input. This is the most important characteristics of a transistor that the output is 180 degree out of phase from the input which is always 180 degree okay. 
but if you manipulate some external circuit this 180 plus or minus you can do additionally and that is exactly what we do in our real life to change this 180 plus minus something to get the phase I want but transistor per se will always give you 180 degree it cannot change it to 179 or 185 or this is fixed 180 degree minus sign minus is coming from where j square is that correct j is 90 j square is 180 is that correct this j vector j is 90 so j square is 180 degree j into j okay is that clear this is coming from very simple circuit theory okay so this is r0 all these resistances look to be in parallel R0, Rd, Rl everyone is in same across this. So, Gm times R0, Rd, Rl into Vn is the output V0 by Vn is the voltage gain which is minus Gm times R0 parallel Rd plus Rl. However, this was under an assumption that Vgs is Vn is that correct? It was an under assumption that Vg, Vgs is Vn otherwise what would have come here? VGS and then what should I replace with RG multiply RG upon RG plus RS to make it same value as the gain is that correct if I would have said this is not VN but then VGS then I would have replaced this VGS by RG upon RG plus RS times VN and then another factor I would have multiplied here is RG upon RG plus RS dash if Vn is not Vgs is that okay this is as simple as that okay. So now you got the gain mass gain so what it depends on R0 is not in your hand to some extent you it is in your hand what is it how does it how R0 gets controlled by no lambda is fixed lambda is somewhere fixed okay. So Id 1 upon lambda Id is Ids is R0. So, the IDS which is IDS is coming from where the bias network IDS DC bias current is decided by the bias network VGS minus VT. Now, that value is giving you capital IDS is that correct DC value and that may decide what the GM 2 pi uh, 2 beta IDS is GM. So, GM actually decides how it is under root please remember gm is proportional to root of ids r0 is inversely proportional to ids so by adjusting ids i can say some way gm times r0 can be modified however rd rl are externals okay so the normally what will happen rd and rl will be smaller much smaller compared to r0 how much will be r0 typically mega ohms how much will be RD RL few hundred tens of kilo ohms so in normal case RD parallel RL will be smaller than R0 so you can even neglect R0 is that correct neglect R0 but otherwise as a theory you can retain it. So by changing the bias current what does bias current means in essentially biasing point your operating points if you vary your gains will also correspondingly increase. is that okay that is what exactly we were trying to show okay. is that okay everyone has seen okay. There are two more parameters of interest as I say for input impedance and an output impedance okay before we show it I will give detail little how to calculate for any network I think you must have done it. If you are given a network you can always find the output impedance and an input impedance. How do I calculate these impedances? Short the outputs okay and from the input side apply an input source with the input resistance Rs of you can even make 0 whatever current and comes out of this Vx by Rx is input impedance. By same logic short circuit all voltage sources at the input side is that clear? open all current sources independent current source please remember this is independent actual sources short the voltage source open the current source apply Vx at the output find the current entering from the that node Vx by Ix is R0 so the method is identical to the circuit theory which we have done 
sometimes by observation we will use it otherwise you can always do this for any larger circuit is that correct this time this is so obvious so I did not do analysis so I just want to show you that this is what I am going to do. Normally RL is not considered to be part of output resistance why it is external I do not know what people will give me okay. So normally R0 is taken across RD even some people believe actually you should measure intrinsic R0 also that is without even the drain resistance is that correct. So it will be always R0 in most cases. So okay, if I do that, then one can see from the circuit. Sorry, there is no actual, as seen from here. This is the only resistance it is seeing. So whatever current entering V by I is only R G. Whatever is voltage here divided by R H R G is the current. So this divided by that current is same as R G. So input resistance is. Rg input resistance is Rg very high. How much it will be in mega ohms? Because Rg1 and Rd2 also are in mega ohms. So because of them, we will always have Rg very very high. Is that correct? Rg very very high. So input resistance of a MOS amplifier is normally decided by the bias network and typically is the order of few mega ohms. Is that correct? Typically, why I am saying typically because values you choose RG1, RG2, I do not know. If they, they are smaller, then it will be smaller as well. Okay. okay. What will be the output resistance seen again from here? The same logic short here, then the VGS is only coming from here. So, what is the resistance will be offered here? You open this RD parallel R0 forget about RL if you see a resistance coming from the outside and if I put a voltage source and find current V by parallel this is the current this I am opening okay this I am opening. So if I put a V0 and two paths that means parallel so V0 by I is the parallel combination of R0 parallel RD. So the output resistance is R0 parallel RD typically R0 is of the order of mega ohms. Rd is of the order of few kilo ohms, tens of 20 kilo ohms. So, what is the actual output resistance can be ta talked as Rd. So, output resistance of a mass amplifier in a common source technique is just the drain resistance which I apply, and that drain resistance decide what apart from it also. Please remember, drain resistance also decides the operating point. Is that correct? VDD by RD this is giving the maximum current the load line is decided by the RD and the RD is essentially is the output resistance. If you want accuracy you say RD parallel R0 yes. So what is is that clear since I did not do actual calculations I probably messed up but otherwise you can think that by observation that is correct. So if Rg is not Rs dash I repeat Rg upon Rg is this is the gain of a mass common source amplifier is that okay. This is most important in the case of is this amplifier will be have a larger gain or a smaller gain okay the three amplifiers I told you which are the three I said common source common drain and common gain, uh, gate. What do you believe which will have highest voltage gains? Gate is common to source and drain. Whatever is source will pass to drain. That is what source drain current is same. Na? So it is a unity roughly. Okay. It depends on the load values at the input and output. I is same both sides. Is that correct? So it will be dependent on the values of RD and R, Rs you are actually used. Whereas there is no GM factor there. There is no booster there. In the case of source follower, what does that follower means? What follows what? If it is a source follower, what does that mean? The output voltage follows input voltage as it is. That means you gain a unity. So common source amplifiers is the only amplifier which will give reasonable amount of voltage gains. Okay, is that point clear? So they have to understand, but then why the other two are so much talked about? They must have something additional with them at the cost of what? Gains. 
okay I do not have gain but I must be giving you something better which may still require you to use otherwise I will not study common gate and common drain why should I if I there are no gains no additional advantage so why should I use that. So there we will like to see if I change over from common to other do I achieve something else at the cost of something else is that clear to you this is what we are looking for other two amplifiers. Uh, there is another common source amplifier which is very popular okay another before we quit here this equation you can see there R0 is equal to how much 1 upon lambda id is that correct lambda is what parameter we call technology this is decided by the technology gm under root 2 beta dash what is beta dash mu c ox again technology w by l for external circuit like us has no control so even that is fixed by someone else all that I can vary is ideas is that correct. So if there is a change in this so called technology parameters because of what? environment let us say basically temperature even humidity changes but at least basically temperature if those values change what will happen to this gain they will also change with the particularly with the temperature is that correct. So if you have a design and amplifier in a system which should have a gain of say 100 or gain of 40 it may either go down depend on the temperature which side it goes or may go up either way and then the next circuit will see different input voltage than what you actually plan to okay and they itself they also will get corresponding changes. So at the end of the day cascading circuit may not show the actual gain it may be either much smaller or much higher in which it may saturate and it may not even amplify at that is that correct. So I am clearly worried that the gain function should not be a very strong function of technology. If that happens then I say I am safe because then I know what gain I am using is that correct but let us see whether this the next circuit does that and at what cost okay. Now if you see a, what is the difference between the last circuit and this circuit no no everything else is same except the source resistance is not bypassed by CS is that clear source resistance is now available to you both in DC as well as in AC is that correct is it okay source resistance is not bypassed by any capacitance. So this is called source amplifier with source degeneration okay. Now can you see RS for an AC equivalent circuit we will show, draw it this will be now part of the input as well as part of the output earlier IRS was getting bypassed so no worries now you have a problem that RS is common to both sides okay and let us say if I draw an equivalent circuit of this where does this RS appear and why should it then say it, the gain will be independent roughly independent of technology parameters is that clear why I am worried about technology parameters because the temperature is a strong which will increase do what you okay even if you put a fan why fans cannot cool very uh, quickly all that which law uh, does not allow that to happen Newton's law of cooling is proportional to the difference of temperature nothing much uh, I can accelerate it by removing the heat around but the actual cooling will go by law of cooling is that correct proportion to the difference you are looking for is that clear do you know do you still recollect your law of Newton's law of cooling that the rate of cooling is proportion to the difference of the temperatures okay. So initially it cools faster and then it starts cooling as you come closer to room temperature 28 degree to 23 degree you may take 2 hours okay because the difference is very small now okay. So the worries with us is that ambient temperature you may remove but the actual cooling will be slow is that correct now that means there will be a variation of gains irrespective whether you like you do not like but I will like I would not like that so I should do something which this circuit probably does the circuit analysis is almost identical the only difference 
do you see something difference in equivalent I have drawn now? This RS I have drawn from source to the ground, but remember this RD and RL are not going to source now, is that clear? Where are they going in the actual circuit? RD going to the ground, RL going to the ground, but not going to the source because source is not grounded source has an RS going to the ground. So equivalent have you seen this please look at this circuit this RD is grounded this RL is grounded this is of course your V0 and this is your source which is not grounded. What is that? So, I should not connect RD parallel R0 parallel RL now. Is that point clear? The difference what is going to get is this that RD RL are parallel but not parallel to R0. Is that correct? Because they are too grounded, R0 is only going to source because that is how I define R0. Okay. For the sake of it, maybe we can say lambda is very small. First case, we may say RG is much larger than RS sorry this is called RS dash and we say R0 first simplicity. So, this is your V in with reference to the ground ok. Please remember this V in or this value is not same as VGS is please look at the circuit again. This V in because this is grounded but this is not grounded is that correct is that clear vein is grounded but this terminal is not going to the source is not going to ground but to the source so i now write a kirchhoff law okay i start from here vein and i calculate the voltages how it falls so first is vein is equal to vgs this is Vn, so Vgs plus what is the current flowing in Gm Rs? Gm times Vgs is the current flowing in the Rs, is that okay? This is Vgs plus this drop I want to know. What is the Vn to the ground? This voltage plus this voltage, Vgs plus Irs, whatever flowing through this, this is my Vn, is that okay? How much is VGS? I will find out. So, this is VGS plus GM times VGS into RS is equal to Vn. Is that okay? I repeat this voltage plus this voltage is the ground to this voltage. Is that okay? Divider this plus this is this. Okay. So, GM VGS into RS plus VGS which is equal to VGS times 1 plus GMRS. So, how much is VGS now? <coughs> VGS is V in upon 1 plus GMRS is your VGS, is that okay? Just solve this equation. So, VGS is equal to V in upon 1 plus GMRS, is that correct? If RS is 0, what is the condition we will get? V in is V j that is what we did if R s is 0. Now, I say R s present. So, all that it has reduced something this is called degeneration the word is degeneration input is degenerated now by 1 plus g m r s term ok compared to earlier ok. But what is the advantage of doing all this ok so, must be getting something out of if this is open circuited same current passes through R s. So, G m V G s into R s is the drop across R s plus V G s must be equal to V in solve it and you get this expression ok. Simple circuit analysis. How much is V 0 from here from our circuit analysis? This current is actually putting G m V G s is the only current source which is also passing through R D R L if R 0 is infinite again the idea is R 0 is infinite. So, I write G m V G s R D parallel R s is V 0 then I replace V 0 by how much V in upon 1 plus 
GMRS. So I get AV is equal to V0 by Vn minus GM upon 1 plus GMRS times RD parallel RL. Okay. I repeat if RS GMRS is much larger than 1. What is GMRS is larger? It may be GM is typically of the order of how much? 10 to power minus 3 or kind. RS may be 10 kilo ohms. So it will be around 10. So, you may say if GMRS is larger than 1, GM upon 1 plus GMRS is 1 and then you get, uh, sorry, then GMRS, GM cancels, then I get RD parallel divided by RS. Can you now see the voltage gain does not have a term which is technology related? Is that okay? The voltage gain of a common source amplifier with source not bypassed or degenerated source, uh, source this, then we get a gain which is ratio of load to the source resistance. Is that correct? None of these two terms are anyway technology dependent. What is the criteria only to do this? GMRS should be larger than 1 or RS should be larger than 1 upon GM that is what exactly how to make a RS value. So, RS is should be greater than 1 upon GM, GM is decided by the currents you are already passing in the DC currents. So, you find out the choice of, so now it said you, you must understand there is a problem. In calculate on a bias network you need an RS value and to get RS greater than GM also you have another inequality going on there. Solve together such that both conditions are simultaneously satisfied. Is that clear what I said? In calculation of a bias point operating point RS is appearing there also. But the condition I am now saying and GM is you are using. So, condition I am saying use GM 1 upon GM should be smaller than RS. Okay. So, you make some choice of RS first, get that bias point using this and recheck whether that satisfies your proper by saturation active mode conditions and then also see that this value is equally satisfied. Is that correct? If that does not happen then you may have a problem of instability. This does not happen normally we know how much to keep. So, that value 10 times is good enough for all cases. Okay. So, what is the advantage of this again? RDs will be order of RD RL will be order of few tens of kilo ohms. RS will be of the same order. So, what will be typical gains will be 2, 3, 4, 5. Typically, the gains will be 2, 3, 4, 5, even 1 if they are equal. Okay. So, what does that mean? We have achieved something at what cost? At the cost of co voltage gain, I say, okay, I am, I am stabilizing it. Okay, I am getting now an amplifier which is temperature independent. Why it is temperature independent? Because even these are temperature dependent term. R has a positive temperature coefficient, but since they are in the same, assuming same material carbon resistor, the temperature coefficient of R and numerator denominator may almost be similar, and therefore they are independent of temperatures. Is that correct? Is that clear? So what is the advantage I got? If I want a very stable gain, but not very large gains then I should use common source with degenerated source resistance. Hmm. This is how, so a very large cost I paid, I would have got a gain of 100 and now I am getting 5, okay. but I am now saying kuch bhi hone do, gain to hai. Hmm. that is exactly what circuit people want, okay. they want to know is it stable, is it fixed, okay. is that okay. So, something, so wherever the first stage of amplifier or wherever you feel that it, it is more uh, prone to ambience, there you first use a low gain amplifier which is common source degenerated, degenerated source amplifier. Then ahead you may use normal amplifier for next boost which probably is away from it so that it is not that much temperature dependent, is that clear? So, this particularly happens in instrumentation or measurement systems. The sensor part is in an environment which may be bad. Okay. So, there when I boost the signal, I must have a constant gain signal. Is that correct? 
once I come out of that then I can amplify because I have come out of the system now is that clear. So the whenever there is an instrumentation sensor measurements the first stage should be this kind because it should give you almost stable outputs is that correct and then as you get the signal you have a 1 microvolt signal and you say now you have a 5 microvolt fixed signal the next stage may be a normal common source amplifier is that okay. So I am not really worried about large boost but I want to get out of this temperature variation and have a good signal for me okay this is what essentially we do. So two amplifiers we saw one is common source the other is common source with source degeneration. Here is some quick problems I will not uh, solve it fully I just want to show you how do you typically you are given a value of this is taken from Mil, uh, this hour sorry Sedan Smith book so you can see the values RG1, RG2 have been given like this VDD is 5 fold okay in analog circuit in my first slide I show it is a dual rail supply what does that mean I said you may have a power supply at the top VDD side plus and at the source side minus but the actual voltage will be VDD minus VSS and since it is minus actually it sums. So if a 5 volt supply I want to use total so what should be VDD VSS if they are to be equal 2 and 2.5 plus minus 2.5 down is that it has some advantage maybe in the quiz I will ask you read today why I should have 5 to 0 is not as preferred at 2.5 to minus 2.5 there must be some advantage you know difference is still 5. So why I want 2.5 minus 2.5 there must be something more to it look at it okay right now the value is chosen in from Sedra Smith are these RD parallel RL is given to you 7k source degenerated resistance is half k source resistance signal source resistance is 0 beta n is 2 millivolt per lambda is taken 0 threshold is 0.8 okay. What does this beta n means it includes w by l it includes w by l beta n dash w by l together I have given you a value of 2 milliamp per volt square. So what is the RG value in our equivalent circuit RG1 parallel RG2 so whatever parallel combination from there. The DC analysis if I do which I did VGSQ is given 1.5 volt VDSQ is 6.2 volt this is I have calculated you can I am directly in your DC points VGSQ is 1.5 VDSQ is 6.25 ID current flowing is given to us how much somewhere given to us 0.5 okay if not given assume it now okay 0.5 million. Then GM is equal to 2 beta n IDSQ which is is that okay if these values are given for given RG1 IDSQ I am given as 0.5 milliamps then GM can be calculated as 1.4 milliamp per volt is that correct. Please remember you must write correct units in circuits please do not say marks have been directed for uh, only units oh it is correct sir sir to hai but correct nahi hai. I may exist but marks may not okay. So please remember every place your units must be correct okay. Okay R0 is given lambda 0 to infinite. So what is the gain for this amplifier GM upon 1 plus GM RS RD parallel RL substitute all values the gain is 5.76. How much gain I told you it will be around 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. So how much gain I got? 5.76 or around 6 you can say if you use 1 plus GMRS is GMRS then RD by RS so look at the value now since GMRS is not very large compared to the other ones very large compared one without if I use this expression then I get gain of 14 whereas if I use exactly what is the why I am saying you this essentially means this identity is not correct in the value given to you here is that clear if GMRS is not much larger than 1 you may land in such situation you may get only you may get much larger gains which actually does not exist okay. So in calculations do not a priori believe that GMRS is larger than 1 and remove it okay. 
So I intentionally chose this value from the book such that I will show you that I keep saying it is RD by RS, RD by RS but do not believe me every time because the values given will decide whether but if you do not do this and only do this it will take automatically correct values irrespective whether it is lower or smaller or whatever it is, is that correct? So this example was just to make a warning signal to you that do not go by just uh, my statements because unless you verify this. Okay. Since we are, as I say, thoda pedagogy ho gani chahiye. Equivalent common emitter source amplifier, common emitter amplifier. Okay, all this, the amplifier shown last time also. What is the, uh, what things I left in all equivalent circuits? Capacitances. Why I left it? I say I am working at low frequencies, and all of them are open or short as far as the requirements. I am not considering that, but where will I consider them? The high bandwidths. I say up to where this will work. At that time, I will use full this, and that is our next frequency response of an amplifier is our next topic. So I am avoiding that just here to show that because that anyway is going to come. Here also, CC1, CC2, CE are so chosen that it acts like a short circuit for AC, short circuit for AC short circuit for AC otherwise for DC they are all open circuit. I repeat CC1, CC2 and C are so chosen that they act like a short circuit for AC signals and open circuits for DC signals. Do you see this is identical to MOS? There is if you replace this transistor by a mass transistor, how does it differ? There is some difference is happening. What is the difference happening? This terminal there was how much? Gate to source open, is that correct? Now there is a R pi, is that clear to you? The first thing you are now seeing that base is getting connected to emitter through R pi, which in the case of gate, is that clear? This is the major difference you are getting from bipolar to MOS, uh, sorry, MOS to bipolar. Now you can see, sorry, I forgot this. I still draw RE for AC. So I, what did I do? I actually put a short across to show RE is shorted. The C will bypass, bypass DC at the time, but AC it will short the RE itself. Okay. Is the circuit clear? This is R pi, this is GM VBE drop across R pi, this is R0, this is your RC, this is your external load as was shown earlier. Okay. What is this RBB, RBB shown here? What is this resistance RBB? The bias network RB1 parallel RB2. Okay, RBB is RB1 parallel RB2, same fixed bias we are done, okay. Bias network RB1, ye jo hai na ye, iska parallel network hai RBB. Since in this case RE is bypassed, this is essentially grounded, okay. So one can say this hole is one connection everywhere. Which one? Oh, sorry, I am very sorry. Huh? Oh, yeah, I told you, no, actually it is VB also. I told you that actual there is a RE small resistance, is it? Emitter resistance is also there. So, emitter is not exactly the lead output. There is a small RE resistance there, parasitic. So, we gave a name emitter dash inside to separate it from actual emitter need outside. I repeat what I said. This was a emitter dash and this was actually emitter lead outside. Since this terminal was given earlier books by Shockley, the person who actually gave equivalent, he called it emitter dash. So base to emitter dash is VB dash. It can be called V pi, it can be called VI, it can be called anything. 
this voltage across this is called VB dash because this terminal was given a name E dash emitter dash why because there is a RE small capital R, RS or what is RES I said small to the small resistance associated with the emitter region itself in actual right now if not given all parasitics are 0 RC is 0 this is 0 RS is 0 is so that okay if given then you use that. Ha, so this is ground now because emitter is bypass na. C will bypass the for AC. So this is ground right now. Is that okay? This point is ground now. Okay. I already said that at low frequency this is zero, this is zero, this is infinite. Please remember S C J E plus C this should be infinite. I want to open that across any capacitance, the impedance should be very high. Okay. Series they should be short and in parallel they should be open is that okay. So these are the conditions if I use the solutions now uh, R in is V in by I i which is you can see from equivalent circuit R in is taken this resistance and in this resistance in series R pi R b parallel R i R b is R b 1 parallel this how much is Ri can you see from here between this how much is the resistance seen R pi R pi so actual Ri is only R pi is that correct but that will be parallel by RBB so the actual resistance is RB parallel R pi and if RB is larger then what will be RB parallel R pi if RB is larger than R pi then it is only R pi is that correct. So actual value you may see in your calculation whether it is coming close to R pi but in problem solving do not make any conclusions just parallel and see what value you get is that correct okay. So how much is the voltage across the R pi this value Vb dash is R in upon R in plus oh this oh now Rs is okay because there is no source there. So this is signal source resistance so R in upon please take it this value please remember if this is R in R in upon R in plus R s time V in is your V B dash is that okay this voltage is this this plus this into V in as simple divider okay. So that is the expression I use so typically it can be written as R in upon R in R s V in or v in R B parallel R pi R S R B parallel R pi write everything and if it is less then R pi upon R pi plus v in if R B is also larger. So what is the purpose of doing this why I want to know this V B dash why I want this voltage because at the output the current source is G M times that value so I want to know what is the value which I am receiving there okay is that okay. Is that okay? So I calculate VB dash as just now I said, and now so what is VB dash? It is just the uh, divider between R pi and the source resistance. Okay. Yeh main aise alag -alag expression. I am giving you the real values. Quick check. How much is? So you can see from how much is the actual value you are getting. This we keep giving you all hints is because when you solve you know many times long expressions you forget some term somewhere here there and then your value becomes very odd. So you should be able to know whether this values which you are getting is reasonable you know, because it should be close to that value accuracy may be a little more 1.001 .001 is close to 1. So if are you getting close to 1 or you get 5 then why are you doing all that there is some bigger mistake you did is that correct. So yet this numbers which I am showing you is for this purpose roughly you should know where you are okay. okay. Uh, last part it we finish now. So now the G output side you have a current source of course this is also grounded because emitter is grounded. G M V B dash is the current source R0, RC, RL are the three resistances in parallel output is V0 
I0 is the current here entering like this. Since I0 is entering like this for the parallel combination, sorry, not here, it should be shown here. So I0 is minus GMBB dash. So what is V0? What is V0? I0 times parallel combination of the three resistance. Is that okay? Is that? Three resistance I IR is the output. Okay, I0, R0 parallel RC. However, I0 is minus GMVB dash, is minus GM R0 parallel RC parallel VB dash. So, one gain at the R VB dash itself you can say call AV0 dash, V0 upon VB dash is minus GM R0 RC parallel RL. But I am interested in what gain? Not with VB dash, what gain I am interested in? V0 by Vn. So, I write AV is equal to V0 by Vn, just multiply by R pi upon R pi plus Rs Vn is VB dash. So, V0 by Vn, GM R pi upon R pi plus Rs, R0 parallel RC parallel. What is GM R pi in bipolars? Beta. Let us call this whole resistance parallel combination is RL dash then this gain is minus beta RL dash upon R pi plus RS or more specific RI plus RS okay. Is this gain technology dependent? Yes, beta, beta is a temperature dependent term okay, beta is. So, if I do not bypass RE, what will be gain now? As we did last, assuming that that resistance takes care of 1 plus gm is higher than gm 1, then what will be the value you will get? The load resistance divided by the source, I mean the emitter resistance, is that correct? Let us say R0 is very high, which will be. So, Rc parallel RL divided by Re will be the gain in case emitter resistance is not bypassed. And again, it will be independent of temperature or external environment. Is that correct? That will be called what? Degenerated emitter resistor. Okay, no bypass. But the gain will fall from how much? Huge number, hundreds to five, six, eight, ten, kind of thing. Here, beta is how much? Hundred plus. If the ratio is higher or even equal, the gain is. Please remember, even if load is equal to R I plus R S beta being 100 the gain you are getting is 100. If I use by unbypassed I get 100 but if I put bypass unbypassed sorry uh, emitter resistor it may be just RCRL divided parallel divided by RE that is it okay. but it is independent of beta is that okay. This is common emitter amplifier with emitter degenerated emitters okay earlier get a degenerated source okay what is degenerate word reduce okay you reduced it okay the effect was correspondingly reduced on the gain okay and therefore you degenerated by advantage you got see you then okay the final value i'm sorry r0 is r out you see from here Please remember external resistances are not eval uh, taken care in calculation of output resistance. Why? Because RL I do not know really. Okay. R0 parallel RCs are the only two resistances I have which is the output resistance. Is that clear? Is that okay? So, three parameters you must tell me every time you do am uh, amplifier analysis. Which are the three? The voltage gain, the input resistance and the output all three parameters must be evaluated before we say amplifier design is or analysis is over okay is that okay now so today we'll stop here next time we'll continue with it little more on mos other two mosses